the Dyatlov Pass incident was an event where nine people died in the northern Ural Mountains between the 1st and 2nd of February in 1959 in uncertain circumstances. The experienced trekking group, who were all from the Ural Polytech Institute, had established camp on the slopes of Kolat Siakl, in an area now named in honor of the group's leader, Igor Dyatlov. During the night, something caused them to tear their way out of their tents and flee the campsite, all while inadequately dressed for the heavy snowfall and sub-zero temperatures. After the group's bodies were discovered, an investigation by Soviet Union authorities determined that six had died from hypothermia, while the other three showed signs of physical trauma. One victim had a fractured skull. Two others had major chest fractures. The investigation concluded that an unknown compelling force had caused the deaths. Numerous theories have been put forward to account for the unexplained deaths, including animal attacks, hypothermia, avalanche, catabatic wounds, infrasound induced panic, military involvement, or un are some of these or some combination of these. A catabatic wind, the technical name for drainage wind, a wind that carries high density air from a higher elevation down a slope under the force of gravity. Such winds are sometimes called fall winds. Okay. Thing. In 1959, a group was formed for a skiing expedition across the northern Urals in Sverdlovsk Oblast, Soviet Union. Igor Dyatlov, a 23-year-old radio engineer student at Ural Polytech Institute, was the leader who assembled a group of nine others for the trip. Most of them were fellow students and peers of the university. Each member of the group, who consisted of eight men and two women, was an experienced grade three hiker with ski tour experience and would be receiving grade three certification upon the return. At the time, this is the highest certification available in the Soviet Union and required candidates to traverse 300 kilometers, 190 miles. The goal of the expedition was to reach Utorten, or should reach Utorten, a mountain 10 kilometers, 6.2 miles north of the site of the incident. This route in February was estimated as Category 3, the most difficult. <clears throat> Interesting. Investigation. A legal inquest started immediately after the first five bodies were found. Medical examination found no injuries that may might have led to the deaths, and it was eventually concluded that they had all died of hypothermia. Slobodin had a small crack in a skull, but it was n it was not thought to be a fatal wound. An examination of the four bodies, which were found in May, shifted the narrative as to what had occurred during the incident. Three of the ski hikers has fatal injuries. Threbu Brignoles, I fucked that up, had major skull damage, and both Dubina and Zolotarov had major chest fractures. According to Dr. Boris V, the force required to cause such damage would have been extremely high, comparable to the force of a car crash. Notably, the bodies had no external wounds associated with the bone fractures, as if they had been subjected to a high level of pressure. All four bodies found at the bottom of the creek and a running stream of water had soft tissue damage to their head and face. For example, Ludmila Dobina was missing her tongue, eyes, and parts of her lip, as well as facial tissue and a fragment of skull bone. While Semyon Zolotoyov had his eyeballs missing, Alexander Kolovtov his eyebrows. VA, V, the forensic expert performing autopsy, judged that these damages happened post mortem to the location of the bodies and stream. 
<clears throat> there was initially speculation of the indigenous Mensai people had attacked m and murdered the group of enroaching upon their lands, but investigations indicated that the nature of the deaths did not support this theory. Only the high crest footprint was visible. They showed no signs of hand-to-hand -hand struggle. Although the temperature was very low, around negative 25 to negative 30 degrees Celsius, or negative 13 to negative 22 degrees Fahrenheit, with the storm blowing, the dead were only partially dressed. Some of them only had one shoe, while others had no shoes or only wore socks. Some were found wrapped in snips of ripped clothes, seemed to have been cut from those who were already dead. Journalists reporting on the available parts of the inquest files claims that it states <clears throat> six of the group members died of a hypothermia, three of fatal injuries. There were no indications of other people nearby on Kolot apart from the nine travelers. The tent had been ripped open from within. The victims had died six to eight hours after their last meal. Traces from the camp show that all group members left the campsite on their own accord on foot. High levels of radiation were found on only one of the victims' closing. To dispel the attack, the theory of the attack of the indigenous Mensai people, Bosrodini stated that the fatal injuries of the three bodies could not have been caused by another human being because the fourth of the blows have been too strong and no soft tissue had been damaged. Released documents contain no information about the conditions of the skier's internal organs. There were no survivors in the incident. At the time, the verdict was that the group members had all died because of compelling natural force. The inquest officially seized in May of 1959 as a result of the absence of guilty party. The files were sent to a secret archive. On, on the 12th of April in 2018, the remains of Zoltarov were exhumed upon the initiative of journalists of the Russian tabloid Komsolokaya Pravda. Contra Contradictory results were obtained. One of the experts stated that the character of the injuries resembled a person knocked down by a car. <clears throat> the DNA analysis did not reveal any similarity of the DNA of living relatives. In addition, it turned out that the, that the name Semyon is not on the list of buried at the cemetery, at the Ivanovsky Cemetery. Nevertheless, the reconstruction of the face from the exhumed skull agrees with the post-war photographs of Semya, although journals express, express a suspicion that another person was hiding under the name Semyon after the war. The region was closed to expeditions and hikers for three years after the incident, but is currently available, accessible. In 1997, it was revealed that the negatives from Yuri Kravonsky's camera were kept in a private archive of one of the investigators, Lev Ivanov. The film material was donated to his daughter to the Memorial Foundation. The diary, as I remember, became public domain in 2009 in Russia. February of 2019, and CNN announced that the Russian authorities were reopening the investigation, although only three possible, possible explanations were being considered. An avalanche, a snow slab avalanche, or hurricane. The possibility of crime has been completely discounted. <clears throat> Related reports. 12-year-old Yuri Kuntvik, who later became the head of Yekaterinburg based Yatlov Foundation, attended five of the hikers' funeral. He recalled that their skin had a deep brown tan. Another group of hikers, about 50 kilometers or 31 miles south of the incident, reported that they saw strange orange spheres in the sky to the north 
on the night of the incident. Similar spheres were observed in Ivdel, an adjacent area continually during the period from February to March 1959 by various independent witnesses, including the meteorology service in the military. However, these sightings were not noted in the initial investigation in 1959, and these various independent witnesses only came forward years later. Huh. The original theory is an avalanche which caused the hiker's death. Um, while initially pop popular, it has since been questioned reviewing the sensationalist Yeti hypothesis. American skeptic Archer suggests as more plausible that the group woke up in a panic and cut their way out the tent because either an avalanche had covered the entrance of the tent or because they were scared that an avalanche was imminent. Better to have the potentially repairable slit in the tent than risk being buried alive and under tons of snow. Huh. Location of the evident of the incident did not have any obvious signs of avalanche have taken place. Um, <clears throat> over 100 expeditions to the region were held since the incident, and none of them reported conditions that might create an avalanche. An analysis of the terrain, the slope, and the incline indicates that even if there could have been a spe very specific avalanche that circumvents the other criticisms, its trajectory would have bypassed the tent. It had collapsed laterally but not horizontally. Jotlov was an experienced skier and much older, and the much older Semyon was studying for his master's certificate in Sri instruction in mountain hiking. Neither of these two men would have been likely to camp anywhere in the path of a potential avalanche. Makes sense. Footprint patterns leading away from the tent were inconsistent with someone, let alone number nine, running in panic from either real or imagined danger. In fact, all footprints leading from the tent and towards the woods were consistent with individuals who were walking at a normal pace. <clears throat> Repeated 2015 investigation on February 1st, the group arrives at the of the mountain and erect a large nine person tent on an open slope without any natural barriers. The group traversing through the slope and digging into the tent of the snow weakens the snow base. During the snow field above the tent starts to slide down slowly under the weight of the new snow, gradually pushing the tent fabric. Starting from the entrance, the group wakes up and starts evacuation in panic, with only some able to put on warm clothes. As the entrance is blocked, the group escapes through a hole cut in the tent fabric. Due to some of the members having very incomplete clothes, the group splits. Two of the group, only in the underwear pajamas, were found in the Siberian pine tree near a fire pit. The bodies were found, found first and confirmed to die of hypothermia. Three hikers, including Dyatlov, attempted to climb back to the tent, possibly to get sleeping bags. They had better clothes than those of the fireplace, but still quite light on their footwear was incomplete. The bodies were found in various places ranging 300 to 600 meters from the campfire. And posts are suggesting they fell down in exhaustion while trying to climb in the deep snow. Huh. Interesting. So that is some brief his history on the Dietlov Pass incident.